Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I'm going to do a little disassembly and maintenance on this big guy right here. This is the Herman Knives Dragonfly. So, um, this is a really cool looking knife, um, very interesting piece, uh, but it's probably going to be a total pain in my neck to take apart. The reason I say that is because A, proprietary pivot. However, they include a proprietary pivot screw, and actually this looks like it might be, eh, actually it's probably not a Torx. It may, maybe some security Torx fitted fit it, but nonetheless, they include the tool, but guys, come on. Um, but the other reason this is going to be a pain in the neck is because it's using little tiny loose bearings. One thing I appreciated, though, is that they actually gave you a, a bag with a number of those bearings in it. It looks like with five bearings in there. So I have the opportunity to lose up to five tiny little freaking bearings um, before I'm actually hurting anything. But there you go. So what we can see here is the construction on this is pretty simple. You've got a pivot screw, and then you've got these three screws. You've got one, two, and three. These two little screw heads here are where the lock bar is held in place. We don't have to mess with that. And so we can just go ahead and put this guy on to uh, take this guy apart, that is. I'm using a mat, by the way, that has a, uh, a, a rim on it. Like, all sides of this mat have a rim, so I need to be very careful as I'm taking this guy apart not to let any of those balls roll away, and one of the best ways to do that, hey, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, turns out. Um, but anyways, one of the best ways to do that is to use a, a, a boarded mat so that way it can't go too far. Right, this is one of those disassemblies that would be better done in an abandoned satellite dish sitting in the middle, such that any balls that tried to escape would just roll right back down between your feet. But unfortunately, that's not uh, something I have access to at the moment, so holy threadlocker, Batman. Yikes. Um, so, I guess here we are doing what we can. This looks to be T6 in the back here. Is that? Yeah, T6. Pop this guy loose. And then I'm just... Gonna go ahead, yeah. So I've removed this screw here. Remove this screw here, and you can see it's actually pulling out through the other side there. One thing I like about this is, you know, I'm, I'm not generally a fan of screwing directly into the titanium. That lets me remove the clip here, um, and then pull the last one out. But what he has done is rounded and polished the screw heads, which makes that a whole lot more attractive than had he done it anything otherwise. So, yeah, okay, now comes the danger zone. You see that? The knife is trying to disassemble itself, and as it's doing so, there are hundreds of little balls in there. This is a full Timascus little spacer piece. There are G10 um, little surrounds here. There should be one more of them around here somewhere. There it is. All right, beautiful. Um, so there are six of these G10 spaces that go in uh, basically to either side of this floating time. At, well, okay, I don't know if it's Timascus or another pattern welded titanium, but still, um, it, 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 they're holding that guy in its proper offset. But I'm going to try and take everything that I can off of the table for the portion of this where I'm cleaning up the little tiny freaking balls. Because the less I can mess with those and the fewer places that they can cling to, generally the better. If you're ever curious about the tools I'm using for this or any other disassembly, go to nickshabazz.com slash tools, and you'll see a full list of everything that I use. Uh, it's a video, actually, complete with links and everything, but um, that should answer those questions. What we can see here is there is internal milling on this guy. It's a Gen 2 Dragonfly. It's what it's telling me here. It's 2019. It's got all of these beautiful little pockets in here. Pocket, 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 pocket. Um, it has, um, you know, a very nicely masked off the tent bath which is nice if you're going to do what looks to be some kind of a blasting or maybe an acid wash on the handle. Not quite sure which, but either way, um, that's nice. You can see that um, everything is relatively well polished, nice finishes. For instance, in this area here, um, not quite see a Batman mask in the sunset polished, but it's good enough, right? Um, and then what we have here is all this internal milling. We have this lock bar construction. This is different than I think a lot of folks use, but it's fine. It's reasonably compelling. Where the lock bar is separately attached, um, that has the advantage of making this effectively a liner lock, um, although it acts a lot like a frame lock. But the nice part about it is that there's nothing you can do to press down on the lock bar um, as you're flipping the knife that will make it, you know, harder um, to, to flip, that is. That's one of the big problems with a uh, frame lock is that very often, you know, if you're, for instance, on this guy, if your fingers are resting on the frame lock, it'll press the ball bearing down harder into that little gap. That'll make that a little trickier to do. But anyways, um, so that's a nice little feature. Um, you know, it's a little bit increased complexity, and if those screws come loose, you got a problem. But the thing is, you never need to remove those screws. You never really do. 
is nothing in there that needs to be maintained. And the only thing that can come from removing those screws is trouble. So don't. Makes things easier. Okay. Now comes the hard part. I'm going to clean off these bearings. Um, first off, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little tool here, and I'm just going to clean out, because I'm seeing all kinds of evidence of thread locker gunk up in there, so I'm just going to get rid of that. I'll take that, and I'll just kind of clean that out, because that's stuff I don't need to be dicking with as I'm dealing with this. In my dreams, my hopes, my fondest desires, I, uh, wish that I will be able to take this entire plastic washer, um, out without any of those balls coming loose. That would be a beautiful thing. Uh, it, however, um, well, come on, may not occur. Is this a ball or is this, no, that's gunk, that's thread locker. Okay, good. But my hope is, oh, no, nope, there we go. We lost some balls here. So we can see here that two of the balls stayed behind as we were doing this. Um, this is fine. I can replace them. We can rebuild them. We have the technology. But my goal right here is just to press the balls up against this little alcohol-soaked patch. Okay, see? This is the danger. I got one of those stuck to my thumb just from doing that. That's the downside. That's the danger anytime you've got these little tiny ball-bearing constructions. And also, frankly, see? Oh, again, on the finger there. This gets tricky real freaking quick. These look to be ceramic bearings, which means they're not going to be magnetic, which is going to make it a little easier. But, uh, oh boy, little tiny ceramic loose bearings and not a great way to go through life. Um, not necessarily that there's anything functionally wrong with them, and one could argue that having a wider area of bearing distribution, if you will, uh, relative to a single row is probably a nice thing, but honestly, I'm not, you know, like super thrilled with that idea. Make sure my fingers are clean. Right now, I have all of the bearings in this washer. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this whole damn piece of cloth off to the side here and just keep it over there because I don't need to push my luck right now. I'm doing okay so far. Now I'm going to go ahead and then I've got the bearings out of there and I'm going to go ahead and clean off this scale here. And uh, make sure everything's good to go. And I'll go ahead while I'm in here and remove, using this little watch spring bar tool, the last of the um, thread locker gunk from the inside there. Beautiful. All righty. This is going smoother than I expected. Those are my friend's famous last words. All right. Um... Let's go ahead, and uh, this these are both dirty, so we'll get you out of my work surface. Yeet. And then we'll move on with life. Let's go ahead, and um, I've got another uh, the, the, the cloth here filled with water, or with uh, rubbing alcohol here. This time I'm going to try a different tack. I'm going to just try and lift this out using this. Holy crap, that worked. So I'm going to go ahead then and just go ahead. I'm going to do the Ouija board thing here and just kind of roll it around on here. My goal here is just to roll off, uh, roll, you know, all of the balls fully around 360 degrees. Let them, you know, completely and totally degunk themselves on the rub and alcohol seat. Here comes one of them up. Where'd you go? Anyways, um, so there we go. Everything should be good to go now. And actually, I suppose the safer way would have been just to go over like that, but... What we now have are two clean ball bearing packages, basically. The two clean, you know, sets of bearings. That'll let me get in here and just clean this whole affair off. Now, we begin anew. One thing to note is that this pivot is not round. It has these little grooves all around the outside of it here. And those grooves fit into these grooves right here that are cleverly machined into this whole affair. And this guy needs to drop in in a very specific orientation namely that one, and then we go into place here. I'll go ahead and clean off your uh, stop pin as well, because while we're in here, why not? Okay, I'll put this guy in place, and um, let's go ahead and drop this on. My goal here now is just to make sure that as many of those balls stay in place as possible. Yeah, we're looking good there. We're all in position. What I should have done, if I were a brilliant man, but I am not, 
Um, but what I should have done is to put a um, dab of the, 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 the lubrication on the other side of things. But instead, what I'm going to do here is put a large dab there and just sort of let that distribute itself using the balls itself. They'll just apply it to the area there. And since lubrication occurs on both sides, I can put a little bit on the blade itself. I don't want to relift that because I don't want to push my luck right now. I'm, I'm doing okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and put some lubrication here on the detent ball path. There we go. Just a little bit there and a little bit on the detent ball itself, which is also ceramic for what it's worth. Now, okay, before I go any further, I just want to check one more time to make sure I have all the balls in position there. Yes, okay, good. All the balls are in place. Once I drop this blade into position, the balls will be fixed on that side, uh, meaning they can't go anywhere. They'll be sandwiched in place. So now that's safe. One thing that did just happen, though, is that the lock bar crossed over. Not like the John Edwards sense, but just generally speaking, it's, it was a, sorry, TV reference. I think he's off the air. I hope he is. Either way. Sorry. I'm back at the ranch. I'm going to hold down this lock bar here because it's really desperately wanting to come popping up past things, which is interesting. But that's probably just because the stop pin isn't in, held on both sides. I think the lockup was that late, was it? What's going on here? There are no balls here. Did I have the, did I like reinstall the stop pin upside down? Because generally speaking, when a knife, oh, I bet it's just that the, the, the stop pin is moving off to one side. It's deflecting a little bit, and that once it's held together on both sides, it's gonna be fine. All right. All that this means is that I need to make sure that before I put this guy back fully together, everything is fully in position, because I, you know, don't want to be reassembling it with the lock bar out of position. That does seem weird, though. Well, we'll see how far we get here. Go ahead and put some lubrication down here. Again, just lifting this guy and doing my best not to drop the bearings. Oh, that got dangerous. Good. Okay. Beautiful. This is working. We're making progress. Now we're cooking with gas. Now, here comes the fun. What I'm going to go ahead and do is um, I'll do this part first. I'll try and get the pivot into position. Just so that way. And I'm pushing down on the lock bar here as I seat everything because I sort of suspect, like I mentioned, that there's some, that the stop pin needs to seat itself in there for everything to lock up properly. So I'm just trying to get, there we go. Now the lock baller, but now the stop pin is seated in there. Now what I need to do is insert the pivot. I have a pivot that's coated in thread locker. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm putting my hand on that and applying downward pressure. That'll give me, that'll hold that in place and let me clean this off a little bit. Because this was definitely thread locked shut. I'm going to take some blue Loctite and drip it onto here. You know, I have a window right in front of me here, right off to the side. Occasionally, I will film at night, and I will, just because it's hilarious to me at this point, I film wearing a Batman mask. Um, that's just amazing to me and, you know, brings me some joy. Recently, we had some new neighbors move in. Uh, they, their window, they have a window that looks roughly into this window right over here. And, um, one recently, one evening I was filming a disassembly or something like that. And I, I look and I see a neighbor, a little old Asian lady, as a matter of fact, staring at me, just staring like completely confused at, at the guy wearing a Batman mask sitting at his desk taking apart a knife, um, and I happened to notice that last week those people moved out. Uh, that's not too shocking, given the nature of, you know, modern American apartment life, but I will go ahead and take some credit for that, and that amuses me greatly. Why is this not a torque screw? There we go. Tighten down. There we go. All right. It's not perfectly tight, but you know what? It's tight enough. 
what we're going to do here is just take a look through here. And I'm just using some light. And actually, I'll just go ahead and use a light. Um, and I'm going to shine that light through the pivot here to, just to make sure that none of the balls are um, loose. That it's not like hung up on one ball that has gotten loose in there. Sure doesn't look to be that way, but, you know, I always want to check, right? All right. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Whoa there. It's a little much. Okay. Next step is going to be to put this damn backspacer in position. I think I just screwed myself. I think I've played myself here quite thoroughly. Because here's the downside of this construction method, is that these screws need to go in from the top here. The backspacer needs, and the, these little G10 things are speared by the screws, right? And so uh, this is not going to be great. Um, what I'm going to try and do here, and I can't really do this on camera because I need the table. The table is an integral part of this whole affair. And I'm going to go ahead and use this little it's a Jet Beam RRT01. I'm going to just set it right over here so I've got a little bit more light on the situation. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just try and go ahead and put this, align these little G10 wafers here with the holes that they're uh, going to be, you know, going into here. There we go. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this little Timascus spacer roughly on top of them with the hope and dream that it's going to be somewhat in alignment and that those guys are going to live there. And then finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these tweezers to try and slip those G10 spacers in between the scale and the back spacer. Luckily, they're thick enough that I can kind of get away with this ish. But this isn't an amazing experience. This is going to be a knife where I complain about the disassembly process because this is a knife whose disassembly process warrants complaint. Um, this is not a thing that Herman, I think, is really planning for. Okay, now this part especially I'm going to have some trouble showing you guys. But here's what I'm trying to do. This screw needs to go in first, this far one here. And so what I'm going to try and do is just kind of lean over and spear this one by one. Step one is going to be to get it through the first G10 wafer there. Um, and I have indeed done that. Now step two is going to be to get this screw into the Timascus spacer hole. And that's just going to be a process of manipulating this spacer. Hey, there we go. Okay, we're in. Step three is going to be to get it in through the last G10 loop. Are we in? Beautiful. I've just tossed all of my G10 spaces. All of that work is for naught. Okay, whatever. And I didn't thread lock the screw. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to work this. I'm going to, instead of thread locking the screw, I'm going to thread lock the screw hole. I'm going to use this liquid Loctite here. I'm going to apply it to this um, watch spring bar tool. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this, just like that. And then I'm going to do this. That should allow me to insert these screws without worrying about thread locking and still have the benefit of thread locker because I sure as heck don't want to take this guy back apart. All right, now I'm leaving this screw a little bit loose. I can't do that. Okay. I really shouldn't do that. So here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to drop this through, and I'm going to drop this through. These two screws are going to be there, and they're going to keep the backspacer in alignment. And then I'm going to fully tighten this screw down. The reason I'm, I, I'm bulking here is that once I put the clip back in place, I won't be able to manipulate this screw, so I can't leave it partially undone. Now I know that this guy, the, the, the backspacer itself, at least of all of my problems, that shouldn't be one of them because the backspacer itself should be in position. So what I should be able to do next is just pop these G10 wafers into position. Um, or at least the backspacer's natural state will not, to be to, will not be to come out of position. Let's see if I can insert these guys. 
Okay, there's that. These are a little tight right now, but actually at some level I don't mind that in the least. Because that tightness is going to allow these guys to move, like not to roll around. So, okay. I'm going to try and get these guys in a place where I can spear them with the screw here. Am I... Come on. I feel like I'm getting close here. Am I going into the right side? Yeah, okay. Is this moving anything? Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, that's through. Went too far, though, so now I need to push this back spacer. This little sp uh, spacer ring, that is, I suppose, into its position. I just went too far with it. It's not great, but that's okay. And actually, I'll try and sort of move it using this side here. And then sometimes you can... Oh, wait, hold on. Looking at it optically, it's not quite in alignment. Can I slide this end in here? I, no, maybe. I need a, a thin item. Eh, this'll do. These things are like a buck. So if I bend it, I bend it. All right, come on. Why is this fighting me? Oh, crap. As I rotate it and drop the screw. This is really not super well thought out for this particular process. I'm going ahead and just pushing the tool through from the other side. Note that I'm having to do this with a live blade out. Not super in love with that. I'm sort of wondering how Herman himself does this. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's a freaking wreck. All right, let's go ahead and move my, or uh, use my business card here. It's not like a subtle plug or anything. You're already on my freaking channel, so not like we got a problem here. 22 minutes in, nice. Absolutely expected at this point. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to slightly loosen this guy. It's going to allow just a little bit more leeway for things to move through. Okay, good. So now I'm going to tighten this guy back up again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this guy out gently. Without moving any damn thing, I'm going to put this guy into position. Put the pocket clip in place. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this whole thing down. Okay, now here's the question. Am I screwing into the other side? I sure appear to. Am I going through the swasher? I am. Okay, one more time with feeling, and then we're good to go. Um, let's go ahead and put this guy in. Top seems to be less tight for some reason. Oh, you son of a... Okay. G10 ring down. Where did you go, G10 ring? You know, of all the things I figured were going to go someplace, that one really wasn't it, actually, come to think of it. Let's go ahead and find that. And, of course, it's the one non-magnetic freaking component on this thing. Ay, ay, ay. Where are you, G10 ring? Why have you forsaken me at the moment? Oh, tell me it didn't just fall into there. I've got a briefcase next to the shelf here that I'm going to do a review on here. This piece is the one thing they did not include a spare of. So the stakes are a little bit higher. Much like cows raised in a hemp field. Um, where are you? Where did you roll to? What did you do with your uh, Thursday evening? Oh, I looked for a G10 spacer on the floor wearing a Batman mask with a flashlight. Oh, cool. I went to a party or something. All right.
Well, I'm going to do my best to keep my uh, my commentary interesting and incisive. Here it is. Hallelujah. All righty. Hey, I didn't have to stretch my commentary muscles, so to speak. Toss the Batman mask back on, just in case a new little old Asian lady moves in. I don't have any problem with little old Asian ladies, just for what it's worth. I just, apparently, maybe they don't care for Batman. More Superman fans, I don't know. Either way, um, we're going to go ahead and push this guy into position here. One other approach that I could actually take here, and actually maybe not a bad approach, would be to bottom light this. Take this light here, tail stand it, and look through there and see where these things are relative to one another, being very mindful of the pinky finger with the live blade. <sighs> Herman Knives, you do amazing work. This is for sure. But for the love of all things holy, please, please, Think about this assembly a little more, will you? Will you, Herman? Well, Bartosz, I suppose. Okay. One of these guys is partway through. If we take a look here, you can see one of them is part of partially through there. The other one is not yet. So let's go ahead and push on the top one and see whether that one's the one that's partway through. Again, I'm just trying to keep this guy... Using the light from this little guy here. This is getting awfully close to where it looks like it should be. Oh, oh, too far, too far. Oh, God, we've gone too far. Has science gone too far? And now a child is screaming. Probably not because of the Batman mask. No one's moved back in there yet. Can you imagine that conversation with the leasing office? Did you know that Batman lives here? No, he doesn't. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Okay, so I've got the first of these two guys speared, so to speak. Now we'll go ahead and pop this guy, and I'm just trying to push it roughly in the direction that I think it needs to go. And again, this is very tight right now. Can I? Oh, I can loosen this guy. It looks like I can get a T8 in here. Or a D6 in here. Yeah, I can. That's actually a nicety. So I can loosen both of these guys just a tad. And that'll make it easier for me to move this little guy on the bottom here. Okay. That was too easy. Which is actually the very first time anybody has ever said those words during the disassembly of a Herman knife. Are we in? Are we getting close to in? Oh, yes. Yes, indeedy. We are. Holy crap, we're in. Okay, I think. Are you turning? Are you screwing? Hey, we're screwing. All righty, guys, we are screwing. Uh, that's not usually... Uh, here I am wearing a Batman mask shouting, All righty, guys, we are screwing. Uh, no wonder they moved out. <laughs> All righty, let's go. <laughs> I hope there's a Yelp review. <laughs> Too many mass crusaders disassembling knives. Do not recommend. All right. So what we can see here is the lockup is now back to a relatively early state, although not so early as to be concerning. We have zero blade play here. I'm going to try and play with the pivot a little bit here. Loosen it up a little bit, see if we can get a little bit of, uh, you know, droppier, shuddier action out of it. Holy crap, this has been an odyssey. I kind of knew that going in, but holy crap, Herman. I'm assuming... Oh, no. Okay. That's an action, all right. Is there any play here? Maybe the tiniest, slightest bit. I don't know. Let's go ahead and just pop this... God, I hate seating this pivot. Herman, you're killing me over here. Righty tighty. Give that a little twisty. That was righty. Yeah, that was righty. All righty. 
<laughs> Sorry, that one wasn't even intentional. We have no blade play, vertical or horizontal. We have a lockup that looks exactly where it started. We have dead freaking centering. We have an action that is a little smoother than when I began. And we have all of the balls in freaking place, all of the spaces. All of that. That was a thing, my friends. That was a thing. I don't know that I recommend that particular thing, but it was a thing. I, I just literally thought to myself, Do, did I nano-oiled it? Like, I'd forgotten about it. Like, and that's what I was using, by the way, is 10-weight nano-oil. Like, it had been so long since I did the pivot because of that whole affair that I'd forgotten about it. So that should tell you what we're working with over here. But anyways, there you go. I hope this was interesting to you. If nothing else, there's an explanation as to why you probably don't want to do that with a timetable uh, in your life. And um, that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.